here in Exeter, UK, trying to find out who's making camouflage in the modern day. My field guide today is Leon Andrews, former field soldier, tactical guide. From the heat of the desert to the swampy ass of the jungles, this dude is a master of ghosting. I'm here to get real. This is learning the art of concealment, the art of disappearing. Leon's here to take me to Arctis to meet up with William Jarrett. This guy designs camouflage patterns for a living. When I was a young soldier, this is where I used to turn around and buy a lot of my equipment from. What's up, man? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I came here all the way from LA to meet up with this guy and learn all about camouflage. Well, um, you come to the right place. You name it, we've done it. Fighter pilot suits, special forces. We once even did all the covert radio gear for the White House, all from this windy shed, you know, if you can believe it. I think you should kid us out. Let's do it. So camouflage works in two basic ways. So first of all, it's about blending in with the ambient environment. So you have similar colors, similar tones. And then also it works by essentially breaking up your outline. So you have different shapes, different lines. And so that confuses the eye. If you're looking out for a man and he's all cut into different shapes, you don't recognize him. We've got a few examples here. So this is the old Australian print, our bunny ears. This is for the Outback. This is like... Exactly, yeah. I got my you didgeridoo. Got a, you got your boomerang. <laughs> We're good to go. Classic DPM, which you might have seen, from tramps to soldiers. This is the Swedish, developed for alpine regions with dark emeralds to go with the sort of conifers and things like that. I mean, the crazy thing about when you look at camo, is the artful aspect. Like, this is more painterly. You know, this has some weird kind of like digital computer, like new media. This is cubist. And I feel like almost like if you date back to like the times they're making this, it probably connects to art history in some form. You've actually hit the nail on the head because they were influenced by cubist painters. It all sort of happened in World War I by painting gun emplacements. They would have a section of camouflage, they call it. But the actual first camouflage in terms of a wearer were two French guys sat in a trench and they literally got two paintbrushes out and literally painted themselves. I mean, I'm brown, so if I was just nude, like, would I be better off in the camo or would I be better off just nude? You'd be better off in the camo because uh, your skin tends to shine. Ooh. I need some gear. This is like a scene in Metal Gear Solid right here. Get ready to be transformed. Wide sealed in airtight storage. The Arc Air Archive. Here's a selection of different camouflages for different environments. This is probably the best one to use. Tried and tested, proven for decades. Standard British DPM. If Arnold had this in Predator 1, he might have taken out the Predator a lot faster. You don't need gold mud. What we now need to sort out is some booting, possibly a bit of webbing, and we'll go from there. Let's do it, buds. 